All right, so I finished this bike off yesterday, but there's one thing that I didn't account for, or um, I didn't expect, and that was the chain line. It is way out at the moment. No idea why. I mean, I've literally just swapped over crank sets, uh, but for some reason, it has gone way out. So what I'm going to do is just go through the process of swapping out this cup and cone button bracket that's already on them, which is actually quite a nice one, um, for a cartridge bearing. So something like Shimano's UN55, which you can find in various places. This one was advertised in the local shop for £30, got one on eBay for £15. Um, come in different lengths, this one's a 113, I've got a 115 to try, um, this one in there is a 119, so a 115 should work I think, but if not I've got the 113. But I'm going to go through the process of changing it, how you measure it, so that if you want to change your uh, serviceable barn bracket, which is the cup and cone, so it's got the uh, axle two cups, two bearing races inside, you can service it all for one of those cartridge bearings which you just uh, wind in and wind out. Um, yeah, this video is going to be for you. So let's get started. So you don't need to take off the chain or anything like that, you can do it with the chain still in place. Um, we're going to have to take off these caps which a little screwdriver should just pop out. And then inside, you're either going to have a 14mm bolt or a 40mm nut. Uh, it could be 15 if you've got some other type, but generally I find 14mm is the one to use. And this is going to come off dead simple because it's already been put on. 14mm just comes straight out of there. And we've got a nut on these ones. Now to get this arm off, um, mine's going to come off super easy because it's only just been put on. They might be a little bit difficult if they've been on for years. Um, we're going to need a crank extractor. Now I've got the Park CCP22. That's in focus there. Um, and basically what we're going to do is just wind that in. Thread that into the cranks. And this outer section is going to be threaded in when we wind this inner section in it's going to push against the uh, axle spindle um, and in effect pull the arm off so you just wind that in enough there we go and as you wind this in it's just, it literally just pulls it off and mine's fresh on so it's really easy to get off there are a few variations of these, like the modern ones, like ICE, IS, IS, Drive, um, Octolink, need a fatter head on them. And some old strong like cranks need a special tool as well because they've got special threading like 23 and a 23.1 or something like that, something ridiculous. Um, but they need special tools for those. But generally, you just get away with uh, one of these. You can get these Halfords, eBay, wherever. You don't need to park one. Anyone will do. And that just pulls off. So now we've got to do the same for the other side. Now, while we've got both sides off, um, you're going to want to measure. Oh, what is up with you? Kitty can help. So when you want to, um, when you get both sides off. You're going to want to measure your axle length, so from this side all the way here, all the way over to this side. Um, if you're just going straight swap, it shouldn't make a difference. Uh, you can adjust, if you like, for uh, bring the chain line in and bring the chain line out. Uh, but you're also going to want to know the shell size, so that's measured from the inside, here, behind this lock ring to the other side here, so basically just this metalwork here. Mine's a 68mm, which is pretty standard. Mountain bikes, maybe one a 73, I think you find some 71s as well, or they'll get even bigger now with fat bikes and what have you. Um, and the only other thing you need to know for 
twos in your bottom bracket that you're going to put in is the threading. This is a British thread or standard thread, um, so it's 24 threads per inch. Uh, what is it exactly? I can't remember the exact figures, but there'll be French, there'll be Swiss, um, Italian threads as well on some bikes. So just check you got the right one. Um, and older rallies will run 26 threads per inch, which no one really makes anything for. So good luck with that if you've got a rally. Um, well, this is a rally, but it's a newer one. Um, but yeah, so I have a 68mm shell. This is a 119 axle, but I'm putting in a 115 to bring the chain line in. Um, so now we're just going to take all this old stuff out. So you're just going to need your lock ring spanner. Undo that lock ring. <laughs> Again, this is going to come apart so easy because it's only just been put in. Get you adjustable. Or actually, what I found on here, I'll just show you. 16mm cone spanner goes right on there and grips one side. So those are about 16mm flats. Um, it won't, unfortunately, go on all the way for some reason. Oh, because it won't snap long enough, but yeah. 16mm will unwind this and this is a tange tange bottom bracket so that will come out I pull out the axle pull out the protective shield that I put in there and the other side is uh, left in so we're going to get that out uh, by spinning the bike round ok for the fixed cup you need like a, a wider adjustable or something like this this is the Park HCW4 and it just goes on like that but remember undoing it as in anti-clockwise was going to do this side up so we need to try and get it the other way with my dicky arm okay I did this one up tight always do the fixed cup upside tight ow ow ow, ow pains 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 oh. ok let's try this there we go. Okay, so once you've got your new bar bracket, uh, make sure you've cleaned out all this hole and everything, get all the dirt and gunk out there, degrease it. We're going to install it. Um, so this is your new bar bracket, or my new bottom bracket. Oh, so I've still got pains in my side. Can't crouch down. <sighs> um, it's a UN55 from Shimano. On it, it will tell you the shell width. It will tell you, tell you the threading. It will tell you which side goes which. So you've got a left side and a right side. This side being the right side of the bike. So it's going to go through that way. And we've got the fixed side and the just well, it's not really, they're both fixed, right? they're both going to be the same side. But it's always advisable, I find, to wind the single side here in a little bit to start with, just to guide this side through. Um, so we're going to put a little bit of, just a little bit of grease around the thread so it doesn't get seized in there, because this side is an aluminium and I don't want that to seize in there. Actually, the body is as well. So yeah, grease it up, and then we're going to put it in. So I'm just going to put some grease on the threads. Okay, so you're going to need as well your tool, which is like this. That's going to fit in there, hopefully. Yes. I think my tool's a little bit funky, but I'm just going to wind the non-drive side in slightly. Just get that started. Okay, that should be in enough there. And we're going to wind, put the drive side in. Wind that in. Remember, this one's going to do up anti-clockwise. Try not to cross thread it. There might be a little gunk on the threads. This is why you just need to make sure all the threads are clean. 
is any little bit of debris might throw it out. There we go, that's better. So we're going to wind this one in all the way and then go around to the other side. Do I have a socket that's big enough? So I do. So this tool actually is a Cyclo uh, SBB Shimano button bracket, I guess in that for, and it fits a 32mm socket. So I can get that on there. Oh, wrong way. I'm going to do that nice and tight, just so it sits completely flush. There we go, that's bottomed out now. Okay, that's in there tight. Now to the other side. Okay. And then you can put your uh, arms back on. So this is the non-drive side. That goes on there. Yeah, cool. I'm going to have to change the bolt type, so I can either use, let me find them, so I can either use something like this, which is just an 8mm Allen key that goes in, or if I want to put the caps back on, I can use one of these bolts. And as always, I like to put a little bit of Loctite just around them, just to make sure they stay on. Whoops, a bit much there. Came out a bit quick. Okay. That should hold it. There we go, now the... Okay, get your drive side, make sure it goes on 180 degrees, 180 degrees, of course, from the other side. Uh, if you already got your train on like me, make sure your chain goes just flopping over the crank set first. Otherwise you'll never get it back on. Helps if you take it down to the little ring as well. There we go. Let me just pop that chain on. There we go. And get my bolt. There we go, done. One button bottom bracket changed and modernised ish. I mean, we've got external bearings now, but that would be how you change your cup and cone button bracket for a cartridge style. How you've measured it, how you've got it on. That should last now for a good few thousand miles and they're dead easy to change as well. No messing about with grease and clean bearings out and all that. And, uh, well, hopefully, this has solved my issue of the chain line being way out. So I'll test it out and I'll get back to you. But, for now, for this video, that's it. Nice and short, nice and sweet. Hope this helps out. If you want to see more of this, hit the subscribe button. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And uh, I'll catch you in the next video.